think we need to understand that Trump <coughs> is not playing by the rules of politics. He's playing by the rules of branding. And, you know, there have been presidential conflicts of interest before. <clears throat> there have been presidents with, you know, with business interests before. But there has never been a fully commercialized global brand as a sitting U.S. president. <laughs> that is unprecedented. And the reason that's unprecedented is because this is a relatively new business model. It is the, the business model that has been adopted by the Trump organization is, is really not one that existed before the 1990s. It, it, it is what I called in my first book, No Logo, uh, the, the hollow brand model, right? And, and the model it comes out of uh, the fact that in the—so the original history of branding is you'd have a product, you know, maybe it was rice, maybe it was beans, maybe it was shoes. Um, it, you're a, a, a manufacturer first, but you want people to buy your product, so you brand it. You put a logo on it. Um, you identify it with, you know, some sort of iconic image, like Uncle Ben's or whatever it is, right? You give it a kind of a personality. That stopped working in the 1980s. Customers got savvy to it. Uh, I had a, a, probably the most um, requoted quote of mine in No Logo is from an advertising executive who said, consumers are like roaches. You spray them and spray them, and they become immune after a while. It's just lovely insight from a marketer, yeah, about how they see customers. So, so marketing started to get more ambitious, and then you started to see these companies that positioned themselves as lifestyle brands, and they said, no, we're not product-based companies. We are, ide we are in the business of selling ideas and identity. Nike was the ultimate example of this. Nike 